Hi folks, Carol Ann here from SassyTanHouseLiving.com and I just wanted to give you a quick intro as to the topic that we will be discussing today. We have with us Dr. Nisha Jackson and you will hear all about who she is, what books she has written, and what she's going to be able to help you with today. But I wanted to let you know that this topic, which is brilliant burnout, is extremely important to all of us, not only women, but men as well. And burnout is no longer a simple term for the result of working long hours. Instead, it's one of the largest epidemics seen in the modern world today. This book that we will be discussing is an ultimate guide for any woman that has been going too hard for too long, not planning on slowing down and needing to not just keep up, but to actually thrive in the seemingly overwhelming demands of both their life and their career. The bottom line is women of all ages can and should settle for more to live their life to the fullest potential. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Dr. Jackson and I ask that you excuse the quality of this video as it's recorded on Skype, but we have addressed this in upcoming interviews. Thanks so much. Enjoy. For joining us today. Today we're super excited. We have um, Dr. Jackson with us today. She is a PhD and also a nationally recognized hormone expert and gynecology health expert with 20 years of experience in research and patient care. And she has also established an online virtual hormone consulting service, which provides hormone testing and one-on-one -on -one consultation. Today, we're going to be talking to her about her new and exciting book called Brilliant Burnout. And I'm going to hand it over to doc Dr. Jackson so she can further explain exactly what her company is, what services she provides, and what we're going to be talking about today. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. So excited. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, Brilliant Burnout was uh, my third book. It came out a couple of months ago. And it's available on all online bookstores and, and, and many other bookstores. And the, the, um, the idea behind the book was to really give women today who are really busy, who have you know, many balls in the air and they're trying to meet deadlines and finding, finding themselves uh, feeling hurried all of the time and, and experiencing what I like to call toxic stress. Mm. And toxic stress is, is really becoming more and more of a problem because it's making women and men and even children feel awful. And you don't really know this is happening until you're right in the middle of it. And then you get out of bed one day and you say, I don't feel well. I'm tired. I'm hitting the wall in the afternoon. I'm cranky. I'm gaining weight. I'm not sleeping sound at night. It's just a constellation of, of symptoms that, that, that really plague you over time. So that's really what the book is about. And I wrote the book because I've been practicing in what I would call functional medicine. So medicine that is um, giving people tools to take care of themselves better in a reg regular traditional medical setting. So um, I've, I've always owned my own medical practices. Uh, the current medical practice that I have is called Peak Medical Clinics and we have them throughout Oregon. We just expanded, we're expanding to Montana, Southern California and, and Texas. And uh, it's a real um, uh, interesting practice because while we provide primary care and are credentialed with insurance companies, our goal with our patients is to be able to take them where they're at and say, what is going on underneath the fatigue? What is going on underneath the migraine headaches? What's happening with your periods? What's happening with your quality of sleep? Instead of just having it be a 10 minute office visit and another prescription medication that is laden with side effects, the goal is to be able to say, we need to figure out what's going on underneath this. There's something not right. And so we do pretty elaborate testing to figure out where are all the hormone levels at as mm -hmm. far as the female or male hormones, the thyroid hormones, and then of course what the book is about is the adrenal hormones, the stress hormones. And then getting to work with that patient over a period of time where we can balance everything out. And that includes lifestyle habits and teaching them how to take care of themselves so they can preserve their body and not become uh, dependent on medications and feeling poor. So that's really what the practice is about. Um, we, we are going to continue to expand those practices because I think people deserve this kind of medicine. They deserve to be able to be told what to do to get rid of the problem 
instead of giving another drug to mask the, the, the symptoms. Yes. So I'm pretty passionate about it. I've done it um, almost 30 years now and uh, I love what I do and I think that more men and women need to be able to be exposed to this kind of care. So the book really walks women through what can you do in every single area, your brains, um, as far as your brain chemistry, your female hormones, your thyroid, your weight, um, how to get yourself plugged back into getting things that feed you instead of drain you. So each chapter kind of stands on its own and um, it helps women to just kind of be able to turn to the chapter that maybe is most relevant for their current situation. Yeah, you mentioned that in your book and um, I, when I read the book I was just like, it's, a, it's the type of book you need to read twice, really, maybe three <laughs> times. It's jam-packed with so much wonderful information and you mention in your book um, that you are like a type A personality where you've always worked, you've always been driven and there's a lot of women and you have a family of course too and there's a lot of women in, in very similar situations and that don't have businesses like you do but that are just like have a job and children and they can't right. seem to navigate and negotiate their lives and they're getting burned out and yeah. I know personally I've experienced that too and I loved your book because it really guides you through step by step. Like it'll give you a quiz and say, are you feeling this way? Do, are you experiencing this? And then based on that quiz, it kind of guides you to like what you think that person needs to do medically. So if we don't have the luxury of visiting your clinic and getting treatment from you, this book can kind of guide us what to do so if we take this to a doctor, say, and we say, okay, you know, I read in the book that my thyroid seems to be the problem. How do we know, like, what could we do if we don't have the luxury to visit your clinic to make sure that we're getting the right type of care? Yes. Well, first of all, every, like I said, every single chapter. So I, I really explain what is, what is burnout? I mean, because We've been talking about stress and burnout. Um, in fact, it's interesting. I, I, I have the front cover of Time Magazine in 1983, and it has this picture of a, a person kind of like going crazy, and it says stress is at an all-time high. Mm. That's 1983, but just think about how much more how much more stimuli and stress we have today Oh yes, 1983. I mean, it's like just completely different, right? Our lives are so different, and especially for women because women – uh, there's so much pressure to be everything, and we and and I can relate to that. I wanted to be the best mom. I wanted to be the best career woman. I was the breadwinner in our family. I wanted I want I wanted to have it all, and I really believed I could do everything, and I kind of did. But there's a price to pay for that, right. and I had to learn that. Uh, I not only had to learn it for myself, but I had to learn it because I kept seeing women come into the office saying. I don't, I can't get out of the game. Like I can't quit my job and ship my kids to Mexico and, and go live on the beach. I can't do that. I got to stay in the game, but I don't feel well. And so, so it was great because I really had to research and try to understand how can we keep women in the game and, and being able to work and take care of families and manage really intense schedules, but still feel well. How can we do that? Because I needed to do it myself. And you know, I've always said um, throughout all these years, my family uh, um, likes to make fun of me because I'm a, I'm a freak about my sleep. Like, I got to sleep. And I'm a freak about my diet. Like, if I don't eat right during the day, I just don't feel well. So there yeah. were some basic things that I always did that I said, I can't let these four or five things go because I know if I do, I won't be able to do what I really want to do with my life. And so that's, that, that's kind of what the book is about is, is, is trying to figure out where is it that I don't feel well? Is it that I don't feel good about my weight? Is it that my sleep is really a problem? Is it that I'm completely isolated from friends because I'm a workaholic and or I'm a kidaholic, I'm taking care of my kids. I have five children and, I, and I'm not working, but I'm, in, I'm, I'm completely inundated with my kids' schedules. Mm. And all of a sudden they've lost kind of their social connections and that's huge. Or, yes. women, come, or women that come in that are 40 and say, I never want to have sex again. It's, I, I'm really just not even interested in sex. That's awful. So the, the, book, the book will tell you if you turn to a chapter, let's say sex. So if you turn to the chapter and you and, and, and a woman says, I'm 45, 
I know I should have a sex drive, but I don't have one. I'm, I'm exhausted. I, I throw myself into bed at nine o'clock at night or 10 o'clock at night and I can't move. And so the, the quiz in the front of the book, in the front of the chapter will walk you through if that is a, if that is a problem and if so, what to what degree. And then the actual chapter will tell you what you, you know, a little bit about it and what, yes. what the problem is and then what you can do, sort of a fast track plan to get it back in line. Now, if it's more significant, because I really believe that, that sex drive does have a lot to do with female hormones, I mean, obviously, um, but it has to do with many other things because it's a very dynamic process for women. I use the word dynamic, not complicated. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and so... Uh, uh, there may be hormones that you would need to ask your physician or practitioner to order for you, and it's all spelled out in the book. If you need to walk into your healthcare practice and say, "This is a this is a problem for me. I need these hormones tested." Not only do I tell you what to ask for, but I tell you what the normal ranges are. What not even normal, but the optimal ranges, uh, because it's a little tricky in medicine to try to ask for test results. And you know, I hear over and over again women saying. Well, I went in and had my hormones checked and the, and, and the doctor said everything's fine. Mm. Well, if you look at the ranges on female hormones, that, this, is, this includes thyroid, stress hormones, female hormones, there's a reference range. Those reference ranges are based on healthy 18-year-old women, none of which you and I are, right? Is that so, correct? So, I did not know that. Yeah, and so if you fall anywhere within this very broad range, so let's say... Um, a TSH, which is a, a, it's a, it's a hormone that comes from the brain to tell your thyroid how much to produce. So that's a signal hormone. So that is one of the hormone levels that if it's off, if it's too high, it means that your thyroid's not producing enough hormone. It's just mm -hmm. the opposite because it's a signal. It's like a thermostat. Well, the range is uh, 0.4 all the way to 6.0. So that is a huge range. So if you go in and you have 20 of the 25 symptoms of a low thyroid and you go into your medical practice and, they, and, and you're at, let's say, 5.5. Now, remember, the higher the number, the lower your thyroid is. That means low metabolism, low energy, hair loss, low mood, can't sleep, skin's dry. So if you go in and your level's at 5.5 and the high end of normal 6, and that laboratory has not updated their panel because really the high end is three. So you're technically low thyroid, but you're in the range on this piece of paper and they're gonna say, nope, you're fine. Instead of looking at the patient and say, wow, you have 20 out of 25 symptoms of low thyroid and your level is a little off. Let's, let's start treating you, give you a 90 day trial and let's see if you get better. Because it needs to be individualized to that patient rather than just staring, you know, at a piece of paper and say, oh, it, you're fine. Because that's yes. kind of where medicine has gone is we are literally not looking at our patient. We are staring at a piece of paper, typing on a computer and not plugging into our patient. And that, that is bad medicine. It's not the way we practice well medicine. That is sick medicine. It's scary. It really it's is scary. Because they're not even connecting up with the patient like like in the good old days, you know, when you'd have your family doctor and they knew you. Mm -hmm. They knew when you said, I don't feel well, they knew what that meant, that we got we to gotta go to work and figure this out. That's the kind of medicine we should be practicing because we can avoid all sorts of problems. So if you let somebody go with, let's say, even borderline low thyroid and they continue to gain 20 pounds of weight every year. You no, know, that's a red flag. Yeah, and then they're, they're, they're on the fast track for diabetes and heart disease. Why would we not prevent that? So I'm getting off on a tangent right now. But oh, no. Oh, my gosh. This is so important, people. <laughs> I wish you had a clinic, like, all over the United States, one, you know, in every town, because it's so important for, for women to be plugged really into this information because you're so right. You just trust the doctor and what they're telling you, you know, and then you walk out the door and you still feel horrible. Yes. And it's not really, I'm going to say, I'm going to give them a little, I'm going to cut them some slack. It's not really their fault. When you go to med school today, you, you learn how to interpret labs. You learn how to do this type of medicine. But we're practicing today, I believe, and training our physicians and practitioners more from a more from an acute standpoint, we know how to we know how to fix a heart attack. We know how to fix a stroke. We know how to fix a broken leg, but we don't really understand preventative medicine. We don't know how to teach somebody 
to, to become healthier and head off the problems in time. We don't know, we, we don't do that because we don't, we're not trained that way. And so you have to learn a lot of this stuff on your own. And, you know, it's hard when you're seeing 30 patients a day in a, in a yeah, traditional yeah. medical practice and you don't have enough time. The insurance reimbursement's going down. Right. It's not really the best situation today for the patient. And ultimately, it is the patient that suffers. Do and you see this changing? Like any time in the future? Oh gosh, I hope so. I, I do believe, uh, because I, I'm also a businesswoman and I, and I understand how to take something that's broken and make it an opportunity. I, I love that kind of stuff. And um, that's just how my brain works. And so I was just speaking with Senator Wyden about this, who is, you know, the head of the healthcare, National Healthcare Committee, and mm -hmm. would love to be able to have the opportunity to really get get to Washington DC and talk to them about let's let's just reformat our brain a little bit and start working with our patients on getting well instead of just doing the same thing over and over again that clearly is not working it's not working and I believe there's a segment of the population and it's many of the patients that we see that say I choose to be better I, I want to be well and I need to know how to do that because it's so confusing to go online and Google anything. Google, Google, why do you, why do I have fatigue and what can I do about it? I mean, there's 10,000 things. The nightmare. <laughs> you, it's so, it's so confusing. So I, I do believe there's just some real basic things that medical practices could be implementing to help their patients become well. Oh, I, um, I know. And I know like after just reading your book once, I'm definitely going to be making a bullet list of things that I feel aren't right and taking it to my doctor's visit. I mean, I, it's one of the most informative books and empowering books that I've read in a very long time. I can't tell you how thrilled I was to be able to discover that and speak to you today. Do you think that burnout and depression go hand in hand? Um, burnout and depression for sure go hand in hand. The, the, the connection between the two is it's all starts with the adrenal glands. So the adrenal glands are your stress glands and they produce, they, they produce hundreds of hormones and steroids, but they basically get you out of bed in the morning. They get your brain turned on and they get you powered up for the day. So they, they help you manage stress. Right. And, and stress is anything. It could be like driving to work with your car on empty and going, Oh my gosh, I have five minutes to get to work and I have to get gas. It could be stress like that, or it could be stress that my my child was in an automobile automobile accident and they're in critical condition. So, or it could just be an ongoing emotional stress of your sister driving you crazy and 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 putting so much emotional stress on you that you're constantly dealing with. So, stress is a lot of different things, right? Yes. So, so what happens is over time, your body produces hormones to help you manage the stress. The the one that's gained a lot of popularity is is called. Um, uh, cortisol yes but it's kind of like adrenaline so when you've been running on adrenaline for a long period of time pretty soon your body says you know what lady I can't keep up with your demands I can't keep up with how much adrenaline or cortisol you're requesting from me and I'm just gonna slow it down a little bit so I'm gonna start under producing cortisol and you're no longer gonna be able to keep that many balls in the air and we're just gonna take you out at your knees now that's a very simplistic way of, of explaining it but but when that happens, what, what, what occurs is that everything gets down-regulated. So now you don't have as much zip in the morning. You, you don't sleep as well at night. You're exhausted during the day. Your brain is wired at night and it can't turn off. And, and what ends up happening is that then because the adrenals are your master glands, they, mm -hmm. trickle, they trickle down to the ovaries. They trickle down to the thyroid hormones and they directly affect the brain chemicals. So it's a global effect. So it affects your whole body. That's why the book talks about the brains, the body and the hormones because they're all interconnected. So when you have high stress, it suppresses serotonin, which is your hormone for mood, one of your hormones for mood. So when you have a suppressed serotonin, the thing that you're probably gonna do is you're probably gonna start eating sugar so because it works sugar raises serotonin or it might be that you do some other kind of you drink alcohol or you you excess on alcohol or possibly you start eating too many carbohydrates because carbohydrates raise serotonin and then all of a sudden those 
foods or habits, uh, whatever you are habituating on, to try to fix the problem because that's what your brain's saying. Your brain is not screaming broccoli, it's screaming <laughs> chocolate, right? right? So, so then what happens is, is that it further suppresses the serotonin and then we get to the point where we're depressed or we're having really bad anxiety. So then we end up in the medical office and we say, we say, um, sorry about that. Oh, that's fine. We end up in the medical office and the uh, doctor says, well, you're not feeling well in the morning when you get up. You, you really have depression or the blues. Take this little test right here. And if you score high enough, which of course you would, because you've been feeling like crap. Mm -hmm. So if you score high enough, we're, we're probably going to need to put you on an antidepressant. That's what I'm talking about with, wait, how did we get to an antidepressant? Why, why, why would we not try to figure out what's going on with this woman? Because it's really just the balancing of the brain chemicals, which is very simple to do if you just know what the problem is. Right. So I don't, I don't like this idea of jumping to a drug when we don't even know what the problem is. Because somebody yeah, that seems to be the panacea these days, too, where, I mean, I can't tell you how many women I know that don't seem to need, I mean, just from my perspective, like an antidepressant and they're on them. Right. Yeah. It's, suffering terrible side effects. From I know. Them. It's, it's really a tragedy, but I, I, that's really the motivation of my book. My motivation of my book is women deserve to be told um, or given the information they need to be, become even more of an advocate for their own health. They deserve to have that because let's face it, the world is being run by strong women. And so I want to keep them in the game. I want to keep them strong and plugged in because we need strong women in our world. We yes. need healthy, strong women in our world. And so that's really what that's really what the book is about, is getting a woman to be able to stay in the game longer, whether she's got five kids and she's a stay-at-home mom or two children and a stay-at-home mom or somebody that is at a very high corporate level or is running her own business. Uh, it, it could be any of those women. We, we need all of them. So. so you also mentioned in your book um, so many great things you can try, like meditation, certain vitamins and you know, essential minerals that we need, and even things like essential oils. And you know, I personally believe in the power of all those things, whether it's in combination with you know, a medical treatment or say if you can't really afford, you don't have health insurance, which a lot of folks don't, they can't afford health insurance these days. So what can you tell us about the effectiveness of these types of like self-help empowering tools like meditation and taking supplements and using essential oils and finding me time to do fun stuff with your girlfriends? Like what can you tell us for the folks that can't afford you know, to get medical testing done. Right. So at some point, the, the, the testing becomes very important because unless you fix the problem, it will turn into other problems. And, and, and that's more, I think that's definitely more prevalent in the aging female. So as somebody approaches menopause and, and, and many times even years before that, because the pre-menopause time frame is about, it can be up to 15 years. But let's just say a woman's in her late 40s and she's not feeling well. At some point, she probably should be tested and, and, get, and get on a plan that will balance her out because okay. those issues will lead to something else. But in the meantime, there's some really basic things that you can do that can get you back on track and get you feeling better in less than a week. And, and the one thing that I always uh, like to tell my, my, my female patients that come in is if you just looked at your week, I mean, then there's a lot of ways to break this down, but if you just look at your week and you say, how many hours, so you put them in three categories, my work, mm -hmm. my family, my me time, and then of course the lifestyle habits, which is how do you take care of yourself? So, but if you put your, your, all of your hours during the week in those three categories, what does it look like? If you're 90% work and 10% family and zero me, I mean, you're going to know right off the bat what the sure. problem is. So really what it's about is it's about trying to get some balance back into your back into your life. If you're not spending time with your significant other and you're wondering why your sex drive is poor, that has to change. You need some alone time with that person. And you need some quality alone time to make your relationship great. Because good relationships, I don't believe, last today. They don't last. Your relationship has so to true. be true. And that's true about even friendships. 
So, so that's just a really simple thing that women can do is just take an inventory of how many hours are spent in those categories. And then the other thing is, what are you surrounding yourself with? Because there is a fair amount of information in the book about what's going on emotionally for you and what's feeding you and what's robbing your energy. What is it? Because it's pretty easy to figure out when you are surrounded by people who is draining you and who is energizing you. And that simple little t um, um, uh, task of, of saying, I'm going to put all of my contacts, everybody that I spend time with at work, my family members, my friends, whoever, anybody that you're coming in contact with, if you were to put those in three categories, so it would be uh, energizers, the best, neutrals, people that really don't uh, sway you either way, and then the drainers. And it's so interesting to me that the most dynamic, incredibly successful, um, charge on um, uh, women today, high octane women are surrounded by drainers. I don't even know how they have gotten to the point in their life where they're so successful with people just vampiring on them. Yes. Them. And they have, well, the I guess it makes them an easy target because they're Absolutely. so successful. Right. They are, like they say, if you want to get something done, give it to the busiest person. <laughs> They'll get it done. And so it, it's really interesting because I think that's part of just their, just part of their karma, part of like what they attract, like you said. So, but we have the ability to say, I only have X amount of energy for my week. How do I choose to use that energy? Do I choose to use it to give it to these two people that are absolutely draining my energy? When I'm with them, it's really easy to figure out. When, you're, when you spend 20 minutes with a drainer, you walk away and you either think you need to have a drink, something <laughs> oh, or go straight to bed. You, you feel exhausted and nothing ever changes. You, every time you meet, nothing changes because they're feeding off of you and you're giving them what they need, but they don't do anything about it. And so all it's doing is draining you. So these are just some simple things you can do to start saying, you know what, I got to take charge of my life. I need to be, need to be moving forward, conserving some of my energy so I can be the best person using my best gifts for this world. And, and supplementation is huge. Uh, there's many, many supplements that are that I talk about in every single chapter of the book, whether it be supplements to support your thyroid or supplementation to so support your brain. Like, what is it that my brain needs when I'm having anxiety? What is it that my brain needs when I feel like I have seasonal blues when it's raining? Uh, what is it that I need? And it will walk you through what kind of supplement you need. And then and then the quality of supplements is really important because there is a lot of garbage out there. Yes, I was just going to mention that. How do we know who to trust, like what brands to trust? And with all the conflicting information we were getting fed, vitamins work, no, vitamins are a yeah. farce, no, then next month vitamins work. How do we know what to believe when it comes to that? Vitamins are not a farce. Anyone that, sa that says that is so... Um, is so out to lunch in my in my opinion. Really, it's so crazy to say, okay, I'm gonna give you an example. So B12 that is can be can be taken alone or it can be taken in a combination like a B complex, which I usually prefer uh, my patients taking a, a, a combination of B vitamins so they all stay balanced. But just just if we take B12 alone, B12 is a necessary ingredient to make every single brain chemical you have. So if you don't have enough B12 on board, your brain chemicals will not be produced in the amount that you need to feel well emotionally. Not even just emotionally, your brain has to do with the kind of cravings you have. It has the ability to get your focus dialed in so that you don't feel so scattered and you know attention deficit stuff. Yes. It has to do with how your body feels, how it perceives pain. It has to do with anxiety and calmness and, and, and mood. So just B12 alone, and if you're not eating six green leafy vegetables a day, you probably do not have enough B vitamins in your, in your system. So we need six different types of green leafy vegetables in order to get the proper amount of B12. Yeah. And I'm just wow. talking about B12 right now. I mean, there's hundreds of other, other things out there. But then if you look at our diet, unfortunately, our foods are so uh, robbed of the essential nutrients just because of the way they're farmed today. Right. So so, so anyone that says supplements do nothing to anyone, I, I could talk for an hour just on vitamin D. 
I mean, there have been there have been thousands of university-based double-blind studies done on just vitamin D, showing that vitamin D reverses heart disease. Vitamin D is really important for mood. Vitamin D is very important for your immune system. And if you put vitamin D head to head with the flu shot, it wins. <gasps> no kidding. And now you also have a, a a company that's dedicated to vitamin supplements. Am I correct? And I did that, I, I actually started that company about 13 years ago because I kept trying to tell my patients, I need you to go to the health food store and I need you to ask for this particular ingredient, make sure that it's GMP certified, that, that means it goes through an FDA uh, accreditation process and compliancy process. I need you to get this, this and this and then they would call back you know, three times saying I can't find it. And finally, I said, you know what, I need to be able to develop some, we don't have a lot of supplements, but, but we have 20 some supplements. I need to, um, to formulate and manufacture the most important supplements that I know when patients take this, it works. Responsible supplements that work. And we can test, and we do test, we can test somebody's B12 level or vitamin D level or folate, whatever it might be. We can test their levels before they start taking the supplements and after they take the supplements and not only does the level dramatically change but their symptoms improve so wow. i i worry about people spreading information about that supplements don't work yes on the other hand i think there's way too much marketing and hype about supplements that people absolutely do not need they don't need them so i i don't believe patients need to be taking 20 supplements a day to feel well i think they need to be taking exactly what they need to feel well and See, that's part of the problem i think there's one extreme to the other like i know someone who's in their 40s and they literally start their day with like 30 different types of supplements <laughs> and i'm like how can you do this every day but they but you know this person believes that yeah, you know, this is going to work for them to look you know, as a magic cure all. What's your website again? So our listeners and readers can can head on over and check it out. Right. Well, you can go to my personal website, which talks a lot about the, the topics that we're reviewing today and, and about the book. It's called nishajackson.com. And it's just N as in Nancy, I-S-H-A, jackson.com. Uh, the medical practice website is peak medicalclinics.com peakmedicalclinic.com with there's no s on the end peakmedicalclinic.com and i'll have all the links yeah for everyone okay so and and on that there's quite a bit of information there's research and there's information on what hormones do and and why the balance is important as women and men age um and there's a lot of information about diet and supplementation wonderful on can you talk briefly to us about fasting? Because I noticed that seems to be trending. A yeah. lot of folks on social media, they're either fasting for three days and then feeling awful after that. So could you just give us some general information about you know what you found out about fasting? I love intermittent fasting. I love it. I do it myself. Um, I, um, I, for many, many years was the same weight for many, many years. And, and, and I always wanted to lose 10 pounds. You know, I always wanted to get this 10 pounds off and I would, you know, kill myself to get the 10 pounds off. And then I'd go a weekend away and gain 10 pounds oh, or at least five. That's and it, everyone's I, problem. Yeah. And you know, I never really had a significant weight problem, but, but this really bothered me that why can't I get this under control? And so Obviously, I work with my patients on glucose control and insulin control and just their whole metabolic processes, but, but I couldn't figure out why can you not get off this set point? Like, what is it? Mm. So when I, when I started looking at some of the really early, early research on intermittent fasting, it made total sense to me why women, when they hit a certain age, it's like they just hit the wall with their, with their weight. They cannot get the weight off and it keeps coming on even, and they're doing the same thing. And especially belly fat. That's a yes. big one. Yes. And so anyway, the, 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 the whole theory behind it, which makes complete sense is if you are eating all day long, even if you're eating great, you're eating good foods, you're, you're eating a balanced diet, it's not high sugar, it's not high carb, it's, it's not too many calories, but let's say you're feeding yourself, you get out of bed, and the classic thing is we've been brainwashed to think we have to eat right when we get out of bed because heaven forbid we're gonna have a low blood sugar attack and die. <laughs> and, and so, you know, we have been brainwashed that yes. way. We think we, we just cannot have low blood sugar. And so what happens is, is that as you feed yourself all day long, 
even having a little something after dinner right before you go to bed, your body is in digestion mode all day long. Even if it's just small meals throughout the day, your body is busy digesting. And so your body becomes accustomed to knowing I'm going to use my food, this person's food for energy rather than using their fat for energy. Mm. The only way that you can teach your body to use fat for energy rather than the food is to stop feeding yourself. It's the only way. But there's a super easy way to do it. So this is what I teach patients to do. In fact, um, I just worked with a corporate psychologist um, for some expansion plans that I'm working on. And she was fabulous, but about 40 pounds overweight. And she said, I eat so good and I exercise and I go to the gym, I do all this stuff. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to have you do one thing. I'm going to have you do intermittent fasting for 10 days. And I want you to call me in 10 days and say, what happened? So of course she called me yesterday and she's had great results. So this is all intermittent fasting is. You stop eating at about seven o'clock at night and you don't eat again for at least 14 to 15 hours later. So you're delaying your breakfast and you're working out in the morning. You're working out on an empty stomach. Don't, don't worry about it either because you're not going to die. Your, your, your liver has enough carbs stored there to get you through a workout. But the obvious sure. thing that happens is that your body will burn 200% more calories on an empty stomach and it will use its fat for energy. Wow. Now, wouldn't you like to use your fat for energy rather oh, than... Oh, gosh. <laughs> this is brilliant. I can't wait to start doing this. Yeah. So basically what you're trying to do is you're, you're trying to eat between the hours of about 10 in the morning and 7 at night. Some people do noon and 6 if they're really trying to lose body fat. But, but, but it's about 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. If women would just do that one thing and between 10 and 7 maybe just try to eat mostly vegetables, nuts and seeds, lean proteins, like the majority of your diet's that. And even if they're not perfect, if you just ate during that time, that means your body gets to take all the other hours, so from 7 p.m. all the way around till 10 a.m. in the morning right. on recovery, rejuvenation, rewiring, getting you to sleep better. It doesn't have to use its energy to digest. It's using its energy to help you recover. And that's what that's where people get more energy and they get more brain function because their body is taking the energy and using it elsewhere, taking it away from the gut. And your body's using its fat, so your body fat goes down. You will lose weight easily if you don't change even your diet in one week easily, if that's the only thing you do. So the key is like intermittent fasting for at least a 14-hour frame right. of, of time. Now, during the times you eat, should you do you recommend like really sticking to low carb high protein or yeah i'm not really a low carb person although i guess in 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 a way it kind of is low carb it's not it, it's the type of carbs so obviously most people are in agreement today i don't care what side you're on most people are in agreement that about 50 percent of your diet should be vegetables it really should be mm -hmm. uh, and raw vegetables even better. Um, it's not really what Americans do because we're on the run and we don't plan ahead and it's hard to get vegetables. So, I mean, it's not as convenient as getting a hamburger. Right. So, but, but, but our diet, and that, that provides so much fiber and so much more of a sensation of fullness that you're just more satiated if you eat a lot of those. And those are carbohydrates. So, so in, in, in reality, it's not really a low carb diet because vegetables are carbohydrates, but they're good carbohydrates. Right. They will do what much about bread more. and pasta, things like that. Yeah. Well, so I, I, I don't think people should eat bread. I just, I, I have it every once in a while, but I use it more as a very intermittent treat. Um, I, I, I would say very, very little of your, a very little portion of your diet should be bread because we're not cows. We don't need grain. We really don't need grain. Um, uh, so, I mean, I could talk about this for hours, but if you're trying to reduce the effect of insulin in your body, you've got to stay away from processed flour, sugar, carbohydrates. Yeah. Just start reading labels because four grams of sugar is one teaspoon of sugar. Wow. So if, if, you, if you eat something that has... Uh, 20 grams of sugar, it's five teaspoons of sugar. I mean, you might as well just take a bowl and just put five teaspoons of sugar. In so whatever. that's the way your body will just process. Yes. It. It'll just turn it into sugar. Right. So if you're eating pasta, you have a bowl of pasta, this is not good. Right. It's not good. 
So, and unfortunately with the whole vegan, vegetarian craze that we have going on right now, and I'm not opposed to that, but the problem is they're all eating like chips and bread, like all yeah. day long, because right. they don't want to eat anything else and they just aren't preparing enough for, with carbohydrate, with good carbohydrates. Right. So you are going to be on the fast track for depression, fatigue, obesity, and diabetes. You're on the fast track. Because diet is such, and you make this point over and over again in your book, about diet and how closely connected it is to burnout and depression and anxiety and right. stuff like that. So it's really important. It is. That, along with getting the medical testing done to like be aware of your diet, exercise. I mean, we hear these things, but we don't practice them. So for folks that don't have the time, say, to exercise, you can always find an hour to walk or like you don't go to the gym, right? I read you're not a big gym uh, person. Yeah. <laughs> I love the outdoors, so I try to get outdoors every morning, uh, right. and, and I'll walk in anything. I'll walk in snow, I'll walk in rain, I'll, I'll walk in wind. I, I just love going outside. It's so rejuvenating for your system, and your body craves the outdoors, and yes. so, you know, I really think that's important if you can do it. Not everybody can, but it, it's it's very important to get into nature. So we agree with that. Yeah, especially with all of our devices that we have constantly being plugged into, it, you, you've you got to get into nature. And, yes, and absolutely. Absolutely, because there's, there's, like I've read some studies that show the correlation between, you know, depression and anxiety with social media. As you know, a lot of folks are doing a lot of comparative, right. you know, they're comparing themselves to their friends on social media. And this is a great source of anxiety and stress for a lot of people too and it's growing rapidly teenagers are committing suicide over this and you know this is not good so getting outside get off your computer go yeah. out for a walk right yeah. one of the simple things women can do that i think you know and i still really struggle with this myself because i'm i'm very plugged in you know every waking moment but there's a time at the end of the day where you have to say to yourself that's enough I've done enough. I've worked enough. I've answered enough emails. I've answered enough text messages. That's enough. I'm going to put my phone away, get it off your body. I'm going to shut my computer. I'm not going to answer any more emails and don't turn your TV on. You know, sit down and talk with your kids or, or prepare a meal and have a family dinner. I mean, get back to some of the things that we knew worked before. Get outside and go for an evening walk or just sit down and read a book by the fire or have a cup of tea. Take a bath. Turn yes. yourself off and completely unplug because your body needs that. You, you have to get unplugged. And I really believe one of the main reasons people can't sleep at night is that they're on a computer until the minute they go to bed or they've got their phone next to them. That's so true. And we know that even, even a, the sound of a text message coming in raises cortisol levels. It raises our stress hormone. because sure, it makes sense up. because it's an alert, right? Yeah can't get to it fast enough. I mean, all these little things going off, it's insane if you think about what it's doing to our body. So at some point, a very simple thing you can do is just literally unplug yourself and, and let yourself have completely, you know, just a downtime. Yeah. And, 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 and it might be just 10 minutes a couple times a day where you're just completely unplugged and you're just closing your eyes and just trying to just be quiet. Right. Um, Another That's thing you helpful. touch on in your book that I, I was so taken with was the importance of a tribe, yes. um, making sure that you, you have family and friends in your network that are there to support you. And um, I know a lot of women on social media that their core friendships are done via Skype or done via social media. They're right. not finding the time to have lunch, go out and have a great time with your friends because they're just so busy. They can't navigate that into their lifestyle. Can you talk to us a little bit about that and what yeah. we can do? I can, again, I, I learned a lot of these things the hard way because I have to learn them for myself. And, um, you know, I remember uh, an OBGYN, she was a partner of mine uh, early on. So this was in the early nineties mm -hmm. and I hadn't had children yet. And um, it was like 1990, 91. And she said, the way that you can have a career and you can and, and work full time and raise children is you pretty much that's all you should do is you should just focus on your family and focus on your career and that's how you can be a really great mom and have a really great career and so I took that very literal and I actually did that I did not put an emphasis on friendships 
Uh, I had very little other family interaction besides my, my two girls. And, and I was a great mom. I mean, I was completely plugged into my kids. I was uh, in their lives and, and, and did the best that I could do. And, and I'm really proud of the mom that I was. The problem is I didn't have any friends. I had no social connections. I, I, I didn't put an emphasis on that. And you get to the point, uh, especially when your kids leave that, uh, or they're getting ready to leave where you just go, wait, I, I don't have any, I don't have, I'm not connected to anyone. I don't even have somebody I can call and cry with or someone that can hold my hair back while I vomit all my fear <laughs> in the toilet in the morning. You know what I mean? I, I don't have anyone like that. And that is awful. It's actually tragic. And now some of the research they've done uh, with lack of social connectedness, and I'm talking about like being with somebody. Not social media friendships. No, no like like face to face, like actually being with somebody and, and hanging out with them and not being distracted. The, 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 the physical ramifications that somebody suffers is very similar to smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. Oh, wow. It's, it's significant. The research on it is so interesting. But the main thing is, women give women perspective and if you surround yourself especially if you're really um uh, vigilant about finding the types of friends that you need to help you be the best person you can be like somebody like i always say there's like three types of friendships that you should be looking for like a, like in your tribe is finding somebody that's the fearless adventure somebody that would would take you from your busyness and say, let's just go do something crazy today. Let's just go, let's go, let's go have fun. Like just the fun friend. And then you really want somebody that's sort of your wise confidant, you know, somebody that, you know, you really, that really will hold your hair back while you're vomiting your fears in the toilet and then sit your ass down and say, girl, we got to talk about this. You got to right. get a reality <laughs> check. <laughs> I got to be honest with you about this. You know, somebody that's like that. And then, and then obviously you just need your, your loyal bestie. You need somebody that no matter what goes down, they're there for you. And so those are just some examples of, of women that you really do want in your tribe. Because I do think women make the mistake of having their children try to be their support or their husband or their significant other or their partner try to be all their support. And one person can't be all of those things to you. And that just burns out relationships. But women today need a tribe and it's really fun to have a tribe anyway it's it 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 makes you feel so much better about yourself and it makes you be a better person yes um, how do you recommend folks uh find women like this because that seems to be another you know area that that women are struggling in they just can't there's no one at work and then you come home from work you feed the kids you do what you need to do how do you find time to make friends yes so again, I think it goes back to taking that inventory of what I'm doing with my hours and it doesn't take much. It might be that maybe you have three different types of friends that you have acquired over time, or you could have those friends already and not really realize, well, that person's really important to me, but I don't spend any time with her. Mm. And so friendships do take time, you know, relationships take time. Um, and so, but it doesn't take a lot of time. Uh, some of my best friends, I might only see once a month you know, where I, where I spend a whole day with her or two days with her. So I, I travel a lot, so I can't be with the people that are closest to me, but picking up the phone and calling them is really important also, not texting, but calling them and just talking with them. So, so just taking the time and saying every week, I try to say every week, okay, what have I done this week to be a better person? What have I done this week that feeds me? What do I have planned for next week? And oh, I love that. And just plugging yourself in and saying, it's really important that I am a support to this person because she is invaluable to me. Or um, it's really important that I hang out with this fun friend because I need to have more fun in my life. You know, I need to say, yeah, let's go get crazy and do something wild. Sure. Let's go on a trip that we've never done before. So it doesn't take much, but you've got to plug it in, even if it's once a month to start out with. It doesn't take much. So again, it's like this personal inventory Yes. of asking yourself these important questions, whether it's for physical right. reasons or mental health. But that's that's another reason why I loved your book, because it's fast to go through the quiz. It's not taking you hours, which you don't have. <laughs> Nobody you know, does. These are things you can get answers to relatively quickly. 
Right. There's nothing worse than reading a self-help book for me because I like to do things quickly. There's nothing worse than reading a self-help book that gives you 17 different options of what yes. you can do and it's pages of those. I mean, it's like, okay, just tell me what to do. Give me the fast track plan. Exactly. Exactly. It's so true. We just don't have the time to do that and self-reflect you know, every nuance of your existence. It's ridiculous. I know. You want to just find out where the problem areas are and what can I do to fix them? That's right. Exactly. So in closing, do you have any other advice or anything in your book in particular that you wanted to bring to everyone's attention? You know, probably the most important thing, and, 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 and I say this all the time to women, friends, family, whoever, you're worth it. If you are not feeling your best and you're not happy with where you're at in your life, whether it be whether it be just something simple like what we just talked about with your tribe or you're not feeling well, you're not happy with your body, you're not happy with your mood, you're not happy in your relationship, uh, you, don't, you don't feel well physically, do not settle. Don't settle for that because you don't have to. There, there are so many things you can do to get yourself exactly where you want to be, like at your best. Even being busy, you can do that. And, and so I guess, I guess in closing, I would say don't settle for something that's not right because it can be better. And you should want the best for yourself because if you give the best to yourself and you allow yourself to feel great, you will be so much more powerful in this world, which again, we need, we need women to be healthy and well and powerful because that's kind of what this book is all about. It is. And it's so true. Stop making excuses and just take the time, you know, read the book and take the time to discover what areas you need to make better in your life. And, and yeah. again, I thank you so much. It was such a wonderful book and I can't wait to reread it. <laughs> and I can't wait to take notes and bring them to my doctor's office. Oh, that's it's, awesome. It's really an awakening. And I thank you so much for bringing Absolutely. this to our universe. It's such an important topic. Thank you. Thank I think you so too. much, doctor. Have a great day.